Hello and welcome to Baldman Tech. In today's video, I'm in my 2002 C32 AMG and I want to go over some different things. This will probably have to get broken up into many series, but go over some different things that you might want to think about uh, before you buy your first AMG. So uh, I'm in my 2002 today. I own two other AMGs, a 2001 E55 W210 chassis and a 2006 E55 W211 chassis and each car has their strengths and weaknesses just as this one does and we'll talk a little bit about that in some other videos but for today's video I really want to talk about more why would you buy an AMG should you buy an AMG and uh, what are the differences between owning a car like this and a normal point A to point B car um, I think it's important to, to kind of get a little bit more of a realistic expectation, uh, at least in what I've found. This is all my own personal opinion and experience, uh, depending on where you live. You know, I live in Central Florida, so, you know, what I find on uh, the marketplace and Craigslist and things like that are probably going to be different than what's in your area. Uh, being in Florida, we usually have uh, more rust-free uh, vehicles. Well, I say rust-free, let's just say reduced amounts of rust. Uh, we're more in a summertime environment nearly year round. So, you know, while we don't have salt on the roads that's gonna cause rust, you have a lot of heat, which messes up with your interior, whether it gets sun faded. Uh, usually, you know, any engine in Florida, I would say is more at risk for a cooling problem. Uh, head gaskets are gonna blow a little bit easier in Florida, not specific to Mercedes either. These are just generalities in owning a vehicle in Florida. So while there are some good things, um, I've seen there's just several vehicles that, you know, most of the vehicle, let's say, was parked under a carport and the bumper has been in the sun, so it's completely faded and the clear coat's nearly gone. So those are the types of things that, you know, it's better in, in some hand for value and things aren't rusting away, but there are issues and uh, it's important to know those issues before you go looking at a car. Um, so if you're in a different part of the country uh, and you find, a, a, you know, an AMG, let's say it's 10,000 in Florida and you got, found it for 6,000 in uh, some other state, then there's a reason that it's 6,000 and not 10,000 outside of probably just the normal market that people generally view, you know, Florida, California cars, things like that in a higher uh, price threshold. Uh, so you got to look at rust. There's also, you know, obviously maintenance is, is a huge thing and uh, it just depends, you know, it, a one owner car in Florida may have been driven for 20 years straight, whereas a one owner car in you know, let's say Ohio may have been driven only during the summers for that same 20 years. So it's going to have less miles, but and uh, it, it might have longer uh, intervals in between some critical maintenance like oil and things like that. So it really depends on uh, really, you know, you're buying the seller of the car. You're not buying the car because uh, it really the, your mileage may vary, uh, as it were. So. I think it's important to uh, mention that if you're buying an AMG, don't buy it because you think it makes you look cool. Uh, I don't think, honestly, that they do that. Uh, there's a lot of people that attribute, you know, as far as people who recognize like the cars that I drive, they're usually much more excited about it being a Mercedes. As an enthusiast, you want to tell them how it's an AMG and they don't care. <laughs> they couldn't care less. And to them, they're like, well, what's, what's an AMG? And, uh, you know, it, it's a funny thing is, is I go to my local uh, parts store, you know, AutoZone, and uh, I've went in there five different times probably for different various components. Usually I know what I'm gonna buy beforehand because I don't like going to the parts store and waiting for someone to tell me what I should buy for my vehicle because uh, oftentimes it's just, uh, it might not be the right thing. But anyways, so I'll, I'll run through the paces and they'll look it up. And uh, I usually have to remind them three to four times that it's a C32 AMG, you know, for example, on this car, it's not a C320 and uh, it's a, you know, it, it's a similar engine, but it's not the same. And so for example, last time I went up with spark plugs, I took them the part number. They didn't want to look at the part number. They wanted to look it up. So I let them look it up. They told me it was the wrong part number. And I was like, no, it's not. Cause I'd done my research and come to find out he had a C320 in the system and did not listen to me at all. And then he's like, oh, this is C32. It's an AMG. He's like, yes, that's what I said. So those types of things, and I don't know if that's because there's a lot of, uh, you know, people who are, I don't know if it's a lot of people who have fakes or, you know, there's so many, uh, you look on any marketplace uh, and they're like AMG sport package. And uh, you know, the W211s and it, it's got the AMG sport package. It's an AMG. No, no, it's not. If it doesn't have 
you know, a super, if it doesn't have a blower on the motor and a whole bunch of other things, which I will discuss in a later video, how to tell if an AMG is real or not. Um, it's very similar to how to tell if like a BMW M car is real or not. And uh, so those types of things you're going to want to be aware of. Uh, if you're just trying to look cool, those who know, they know. And, uh, you know, I've, I've certainly had uh, plenty of fun with Mustangs and uh, Camaros and, uh, you know, the, the, especially with my E55 uh, W211. Uh, that is a, that's a pretty sweet car for the money. And uh, they offer a good value to some people. And I say that with this to some people. Um, as far as general recommendations, if you have an issue putting premium fuel in your vehicle because you don't like the cost of it, don't buy an AMG. If you like good gas mileage, <laughs> don't buy an AMG for the most part. I'm sure there's exceptions, just as there is to every rule, but this is just my personal take. Uh, if, you, if you find that a two to $400 parts repair is too expensive, it would put your budget in a squeeze, I wouldn't recommend an AMG. Um, also, if you don't do your own vehicle work on your car, if you don't work on your own car for you know the majority of what needs to be done, I would not recommend it. I personally, you know, this is just a personal thing, I couldn't afford them, there's no way. The, the thousands of dollars that Mercedes bends, because that's where they really make their money, it's after they sell the car, it's not really the car, it's their after sales service, and uh, you'll find a lot of owners that have been uh, pretty uh, mad about it over the years that they, you know, it, it seems like anymore Mercedes wants to throw money at a problem instead of proper diagnosis. One second, gotta get on the lovely i4. Ah, yeah, if, if you have a problem with your engine check engine light coming on, as mine just did, uh, you know, if you feel like you need to take it to a mechanic, uh, don't get an AMG. Uh, they're generally, okay, they're fairly reliable, and that's the best I'll put it out. I've owned plenty of American cars and other vehicles that uh, were way more reliable than an AMG. I had a 1998 uh, Buick LeSabre, and the parts were incredibly cheap, and that car just went and went and went, and uh, it, was, it was pretty good. Uh, my wife, when I met her, she had a 1996 Oldsmobile LSS, which was a, it was a supercharged 3800, the same that's like in the Grand Prix GTP. And uh, that car, the transmission gave out at 240,000 miles and the guy bought it because he wanted the engine. You know, it just really depends on, on uh, what is your normal, you know? And it's same thing when someone says, oh, hey, yeah, I just picked up this cheap $500 such and such. Like, to me, you know, I'm like, okay, that's not cheap. You know, to somebody who's got plenty of money in the bank, they might be like, yeah, that's throwaway money. You know, I, <laughs> I, I can only dream of being there someday, but you know, so, saying something is cheap or inexpensive is truly subjective to, I guess, where you are in life and uh, even, you know, in some hand, what's common sense. So talking a little bit more about some of the financial considerations, uh, you know, at certain vehicles, you know, you can spend $20, like every time something breaks, you're like, oh, it's a $20 part, $20 hose, $20, uh, you know, need some oil, whatever. With my Mercedes, for the most part, I would call them $150 cars. But every part that breaks, seems to cost me around 150 bucks and uh, you know for example on my W211 I spent about $150 on the intercooler pump $150 on the aromatic suspension pump I spent about $180 on an alternator that's like a, a AMG thing I mean just get ready for some alternators just just I, I bought the C32 the next day the alternator went all right People are stupid today. So anyways, um, so going to that, you know, costs are gonna be more expensive. Uh, there are some exceptions to that rule where parts get more expensive. So on the, uh, on my 06 E55, the engine mounts went out. I procrastinated about replacing them because it was kind of a pain. I didn't have a quick jack lift at the time and uh, ended up having to drop the steering rack and things to replace them. But anyways, I only did that after, cause I was like, oh, okay, the motor mounts, I need to replace those. It's not that bad and it broke the oil lines that go to the lower oil cooler. Those lines are AMG specific. They're only for two models. I think it was the CLS 55 or, or CL 55, one of them, you know, and, and the E55. And so that's a $400 oil line and uh, for the two. And uh, they, they come in together as one unit. They're pretty special. And you could probably retrofit something else in. I'm sure somebody has, uh, but I, I prefer to just stick, you know, with those types of things, especially oil on an expensive engine go ahead and get OEM. But anyways, you know, $400 and it was a couple hours worth of work to get it put in there because it's not easy. So those are the types of things that uh, can bite you. So, you know, I would say if you buy your car, 
Uh, one, I would recommend buying in cash because older cars, typically you're not gonna have uh, a very good loan experience. They're gonna have higher interest rates. And uh, the car, you know, a $10,000 or a $12,000 car with a 10% interest rate, it's gonna really cost you, you know, 15 to $16,000. So it really depends on how good your credit and, you know, your individual life situation is, but I would say buying cash is better uh, for the long term. And then also having a cash immediately set aside Usually, uh, what I'm finding, at least now buying my third one, if people sell their Mercedes, it's not because they're in the greatest condition. They're not selling them because they got everything fixed and, you know, not everybody's Tyler Hoover and fixes a bunch of issues uh, prior to the next owner getting them. Usually, people are looking to get out of their, uh, out of their Mercedes. And so, with that, you're always going to have hidden problems. I, at least, this is my experience. Same thing with BMWs. People don't sell their BMWs because they're in uh, the best condition and uh, they don't need any money because typically they do. And uh, that's one of the reasons they're selling them. Typically, should you buy a cheaper car now that needs some maintenance work or buy a more expensive car later that needs less maintenance work? I'm gonna go back to buy the cheaper car now. And everybody, <laughs> I could hear you type it in the comments. You're gonna be, oh, you know, there's <laughs> no, <laughs> the, the most expensive Mercedes is a cheap Mercedes. That could be true, however, when it comes to my experience, just as I said, people get out of cars, even nice, clean examples, they're getting out of them for a reason. And so, and there's always things that go wrong. You know, it, it might be a nice car, 60,000 miles, 80,000 miles, you have, you know, such and such issues. So you're always gonna have maintenance. That just seems to be the AMG thing. Going along with that, uh, I would personally prefer to buy a cheaper deal, get a good deal, you know, the best that you can. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people that want a lot more for the cars than I think they're currently worth. The market's been going up, so you have uh, a lot of people thinking their cars worth two to three times the value. Uh, you know, I pay 5,500 for this car. I put about another thousand into it, and at 6,500, that's about 140,000 miles. So it's not the best deal, but it's like it's an okay deal, and that's usually all I'm trying to get um, because you know these cars are getting harder and harder to find. And uh, you know, for my 2001 E55, there's like 600 in the states and. Uh, 2006 there was 1200 so you know it, it there's less and less clean examples to go around and uh, I wasn't looking to spend a lot more money I tell you what though that's why you own an AMG right there that zero to 60 pole you know this is not the fastest car but like take it off from a light, I mean, you leave everybody in the dust. And like, I'm not trying to be, you know, mean about it. I'm not trying to tick people off. Honestly, these cars are fairly quiet to the average person. This probably looks like just an old, old Mercedes C-Class, if they even know it's a C-Class. I mean, you know, I think as humans, we tend to think that people think more about us than they really do, because uh, the, the more I go through life, the more I just kind of see how Everybody's just kind of living in their own little world, you know? And uh, so it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people think. You know, even people, they're gonna criticize me. I shouldn't have bought this car for this money or done this. I mean, I did an oil change video and I had so many people, don't use that oil. I think I used Castrol or, or something. And, and it's like, that's fine. You know, it's fine to have opinions. Opinions are like elbows, everybody's got them. But at the end of the day, they're not paying your bills, right? They're not fixing your car. So it's gotta be your own mistakes, your own learning experience and not everybody's an expert that they think they are. I hope I'm not uh, coming across as an expert. You know, this is just, I'm just a dude who's been an auto enthusiast for a while. I own three AMGs and a uh, BMW Z3. So I don't have the, the most expensive taste in the world. I do like my AMGs. And uh, so I, that's why I want to share with you all, you know, and if you're somebody new looking for a car and uh, you want to see somebody at least that has owned them, this is my experience. There's plenty of other resources. If you're looking for, you know, good mechanical advice. Uh, Alex at Legit Streetcars is it would be a great example of uh, awesomeness. If you're looking for a lot of uh, spe model specific information on what to look for before you buy, I would say AMG Meister, great videos. And, and if you're watching this video, you probably already subscribed to them. Um, I'm probably farther down the rabbit hole than those guys are uh, with my channel size. But you know, there's 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 a lot of lot of good things. When it comes to like Facebook, there are some helpful people. There are some people too that are not helpful. Uh, same with forums, uh, the whole, oh, just use Google search. There's plenty of those guys. I find more of the just use Google search guys than I actually do find people asking questions. And I'm sure for the forum moderators, they're like, no, it's complete opposite, but that's just my general experience. So um, I think uh, generally 
that pretty much wraps it up for this video. In other videos, I want to talk a little bit more about some specific uh, car things that you'd want to look for in your AMG, how to tell if it's a real AMG, how to find that AMG. Um, I've had to do a lot of searching and uh, it's more, I think it's more complicated than most YouTubers try to portray. Uh, there, oh, I got on Auto Tempest and I just did this. And to me, I do a lot more things than just Auto Tempest. Uh, to try to find a, uh, an example that I am interested in. So I want to go over those things. So if you like today's video, uh, go please go ahead and subscribe. And uh, in about a week, I'll have part two. And then there's I think there's going to be a part three in this series because, uh, well, there's just a lot to talk about with these cars. So hope you enjoyed it and uh, take care. Bye for now.